But now, coming back to this subcircle, right? If instead of having two points that were separate from each other, if I took these two points and grabbed them and brought them together at the same point so that they were sitting on top of each other, okay? And then if I drew the same chord secant, it wouldn't actually be a secant anymore, would it? Because this line here, this new one, this is no longer cutting the circle, is it? It's not cutting at all. It's just, it's just touching, just like, just a little bit on, okay? We have a word in English that means like a thing that can be touched, a thing you can grab onto. It's not like, it's not like A, you can grab it. We call such objects tangible, right? It's like I can hold onto this thing. And that's why this object here is called a tangent. tangent. It's the same word, right? It literally means it's just touching. So to turn this secret into a tangent, we're bringing these two points together, right? And we're bringing them closer and closer and closer until they sit on top of each other. Okay, now the length of this chord, right? Have a look at your diagram, right? The length of that chord is kind of like H. Remember that? It's like that little distance across the bottom, a run. And we tried to make that run smaller from two to one to a half. But what if we could make that run exactly zero? Then you would not get the gradient of the chord. You would get the gradient of this object over here, the gradient of the tangent. Here's the way we're going to consider it. We are going to say, uh, instead of this difference quotient, right, we want the gradient of the tangent. Bear with me for a second. It starts with this difference quotient. We're still calculating the same thing. So I'm going to leave a gap here for me. I'm going to write the difference quotient here just like I did before. But what I want to do is introduce some language and some way of thinking to take this, this run. This, this length of this chord business, right? And make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Like if there were no limit to how small I could make it. And in fact, that's exactly what we call this object. We call it a limit. Uh, mathematicians, lazy, so they don't write the whole word. So lim is an abbreviation for limit, but I'm gonna write this underneath. And what I want is for h to get really tiny. I want h to get toward a length of zero. That's what I want. Now keep in mind, right, this is kind of impossible because then you're dividing by zero, right? You're like, uh, gross. I'm not meant to be able to do that, right? I'm not meant to be able to do that. But what I'm trying to do is imagine, what if I could? Like physically, sorry, I'm gonna borrow this again. Physically, I cannot measure a run of zero because if there's a run of zero, there's a rise of zero as well, okay? But that's the whole power of this number one of mathematics. We can imagine things that can't physically exist. And number two of this idea, right, it's a fiction that helps us to understand what's really going on, okay? Now, one last time. Remember I asked you, I put it as like a rhetorical question, what do you think the equation of this parabola is, okay? Um, there are two intercepts, one right here at the origin and the other one here at x equals four. Jermaine, do you have a question? Um, x, squared x squared minus four x. Let's see if Jermaine is right. How could we tell if y equals this accurately represents this graph? How would you work it out? What could you do with, if I showed you that instead of the graph, what would you do to it? What would be your instinct, Rassin? You could factorize it. It's a great idea. What's a common factor? X Hold on, have a look. X There's just two things. X. It's just X, right? X. X I can take out of both. So that leaves us with X minus four. Have a look at these two. Does that give us, does Jermaine's original equation give us the roots that we want? Yeah. Zero and four, good. There's one last thing, right? Is that down the bottom meant to be where, like look how high and tall it is, okay? Is that gonna make sense? If you put in X equals two, X equals two, do you get this? Yeah. X equals 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It should be 4 minus 8, right? Negative 4, is that what I expected? Thumbs up. It is x squared minus 4x. So here's what I want us to do. Thanks, Mrs. Lee. I'm, I'm really putting you to work today. I want us to consider, instead of some random f of x, okay, let's consider an actual f of x, the one that I've um, gotten from domain, right? x squared minus 4x. Let's consider this guy, okay? Uh, Oh, by the way, I did promise, I did promise I was going to write this properly. This guy here, lim, it's short for, what did we say it was an abbreviation? Limit. limit, thank you. Please write that down now before we forget what it stands for, okay? All right, so now we have an actual function 
we can actually substitute this in. It's going to be a little bit messy. You know, I've showed you this before. Sometimes things get worse before they get better. But let's see what happens, okay? This gradient of the tangent, I'm going to need all my space over here. So I'm going to start right over here, okay? Firstly, and every time, <laughs> I know it's going to get a little bit tiresome, but trust me, it's important. I'm going to write this thing, the limit thing out the front, right? Because what I'm interested in is, I don't want these approximations. We tried that. Approximation of two, approximation of one, approximation of half. I want to be precise. So this is saying, don't just have like a, a little triangle, have an infinitely small one. If this is my f of x, okay, I see f of x right there. So I'm just going to write that all the way over here. It's x squared minus 4x. That's the takeaway f of x. What will f of x plus h be? What does that mean? Like if I told you f of 5, right? It means you put in 5 everywhere you saw x, right? But I'm not saying f of 5. I'm saying f of this thing. So everywhere I saw x before, I'm going to put x plus h. Let's do that. It's going to take a little bit of space. Okay? So let's see here. Um, instead of x squared, I'm going to write x plus h. X plus h squared. Okay, so that's the first bit. Squared? Squared, because this is squared. And then in my function it says take away 4, well, four it's going to be 4 lots of the x plus h, right? Did I leave enough space? I think I just barely did. Okay, so I know that looks a bit messy, so yeah, stay with it. There is f of x plus h. All the x's got replaced with x plus h's. You see how, why we spent so much time on function notation before, right? And then this is f of x. You okay with that? What's on the denominator? H Just h. Thank God that's simple because the numerator is so messy. Okay? Are you following so far? This is the difference quotient, but I'm thinking about it in a really, really small triangle. Okay? All right. Equals. Again, I'm writing the limit. I have to write it every single time. This thing up the top, the numerator, I've got all these x's and h's flying around. I reckon we can work on this. I reckon we can expand this and we can start to simplify some stuff. Can you help me work out? What is x plus h all squared? What am I going to do? x squared plus double the product plus h squared. Very good. Okay? That's the x plus h all squared. Then I'm taking away. What am I taking away? Be careful for that minus sign, right? The minus sign is going to distribute the distributive law to all of the things inside the brackets. So I'm going to get minus 4x and minus 4h. Very good. So I know that looks long and messy, but that's everything in the square brackets. Okay? All right. Now, we want to expand this as well. Be careful for these negatives. So minus x squared. Uh, very good. So you've got this double negative happening. So that's why plus 4x. And then I'm done with the numerator. And on the bottom is just h. OK, that's the messiest and worst this is, like, is going to get. But look at what we've done. Have a look carefully at this numerator. I can cancel some stuff, right? Someone tell me one thing I can cancel. Yeah. OK, great. x squared and minus x squared. So I can definitely cancel that. Someone tell me something else. So now, negative 4x and plus 4x. Anything else? I think we got it. Okay, good. So on our next line, let's collapse this down a little bit. What's always the first thing I'm writing? It's always this limit business, this limit thing, right? Because I'm considering this tangent. All right, the x squared's gone. So my next one is 2xh. Next term, plus h squared. Next term, minus 4h. And then I divide with an h. But look. Look, because of what's cancelled on the top, this h here, right, it's now a common factor all the way up here through the top. So I can just divide through. Do you see that? So I can say the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, I'm just going to divide this thing through. I get uh, 2x plus h minus 4. OK, now just hit pause on that for a brief moment. Do you remember when we wrote this down at the beginning and for many times, right? We were like, that's weird. How can you make h equal, like, become zero? It can't become zero, right? Because then you're going to divide by zero. That's a bad idea, right? And we keep having this problem all the way through because this h is just stuck there on the bottom, on the numerator, and you can't divide by zero. But now this line is different. What's different about this line? Yeah, Jermaine? 
Yeah, the denominator here, if I wrote one, would be divided by one. No problems, right? This h becoming zero is no problem at all. If you have a look at this object, this object here, what will it become if that guy is zero? That 2x will still be there, right? Because it has nothing to do with h. He's like, I don't care what h is. This guy becomes zero. And what about this minus 4? What happens to that? It's just minus 4. He doesn't care what h is either. This thing here, what we've got here is actually our gradient of the tangent. Okay. Now, the bell is gone, I know. I want to show you one last thing. This was the point of that. 2x minus 4. You've got that on your page, right? 2x minus 4. There we go. Okay. 2x minus 4. Uh, let's think about an x value. Here's an x value here, right? Negative 1. If you put negative 1 into 2x minus 4, what would you get? If I, that's a, I should repeat it because I said a lot of things, right? I've got this 2x minus 4. This thing here is the gradient of the tangent, right? If I put negative 1 into this, you get negative 6, don't you? So at this spot right here, not like as an, an average, at this exact spot, the gradient would be negative 6, which makes sense. See how steep it is, right? What about at a spot like this at x equals 0? It'd be negative 4, right? At that point, not an approximation, it's exactly negative 4. Have a look right down here, way, way down at the bottom. x equals 2. What happens when you put x equals 2 into that guy? 0. 0? What does that mean? A gradient of 0. It's, oh, it's flat. It's not rising anywhere, right? That's why it's going straight across. And you can keep on going, right?